So you need to make sure that you start. So there are levels of destiny. There's levels of entering into the will of God. And the first level, the first destiny is knowing that Jesus is your Lord, that you've made him Lord. That's the first level of destiny. And then after that, now you find out, okay, uh, he's my Lord. Now, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to love God and I want you to love people. Okay? Well, loving God, that's easy. People? Uh, let me think. Why? Because people do you wrong, God doesn't. Easy to love God. Yeah, I don't know how many times I've thought in times past, man, God, I'd love to just go off in the mountains somewhere and live in a cabin and just be there and just spend time with you. Yeah? And it'd be so easy to be a Christian in a cabin somewhere all alone. Right? But that's not Christianity. Christianity is being the light of Jesus to the people around you. And if there's nobody around you, how can you be the light to them? So Christianity requires people for you to serve. So you, the first step is making him Lord. Then you start to say, okay, I want to I love you. I want to serve you. How do I do that? And he says, love and serve people. Okay, so then you start serving. See, this is something that most people don't ever get. They, they, they go through every seminar. They go through Bible schools. You know, in Tulsa right now, there are hundreds of Bible schools. And there are thousands of Christians that have been through several Bible schools, one after another. And yet they're still wandering around Tulsa trying to find God's will. See, you can go to Bible school the rest of your life. And people think, yeah, but there's something missing. I want that more, and I'm trying to find it. i got to go to this school, that school, this thing, that thing, go to that seminar, get this person to lay hands on me. I need all of that to find that missing part. Well, what is that missing part? I don't know, but it, something's missing. And i got to find it. And, and, you know, if I don't know what it is, if I do enough stuff, maybe it'll, I'll just happen into it. God is not just a happen God. God is specific. He has a movement. He has an idea. He has a plan. He's moving towards something. He is organized. You know, we pretty much all showed up here at the right time today. Why? Because we knew the right time. Because God set the, the sun and the moon and the earth and everything in order. And it works on a set basis. And there is organization behind it. You know, the, the stars and the moon and the sun, they don't just wander around the galaxies. They have a course that he set. And we set our clocks according to that course. That's how organized down. Down to the very split second, people can predict where the sun, where the moon's going to be, you know, where the moon is, or the earth is around the sun. They can predict it. Why? Because God is that predictable. God is not unpredictable. You know, well, you know, his ways are above our ways. His, you know, his ways are mysterious. Only if you don't know him. If you don't know him, yeah, his ways are going to be mysterious. But when you know God, he is the most predictable individual in all of creation. Because he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And all he's doing is looking for somebody that will believe him. And when he finds those people, and the Bible even tells us, his, the, the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro over the face of the earth, looking for those in whom he can show himself strong. He's looking for people that he can be strong through. You say, well, I, I want that. Okay, well, it's very simple. You know how you get that? That's Hebrews 11. In Hebrews 11, it tells us that through faith, weak were made strong. When you have faith, you can be weak and you'll be made strong with faith. I was with Dr. Lester Summerall for several years and learned a great deal from him. Still honor him as one of the greatest men I've ever met. And his forte was faith. But he didn't just talk it, he lived it. And he trusted God above man, above anything else. And he, he showed us how to walk in faith. And, you know, some of us it took a little bit longer than others to learn it. Mainly because we had to unlearn so much other garbage first. So if you're going to walk in the, in the will of God, and you're going to fulfill his destiny for your life, because he does have a destiny for your life. And if you're going to fulfill that, then you're going to have to take it step by step, and you're going to have to do the general. Then you're going to have to learn that missing part. And as I said, everybody's going around trying to find that missing part, and nobody can figure out what it is. So they're just, well, maybe this is it. Well, maybe that's it. Well, maybe I'll try this. And I can tell you what that missing part is. But most people don't want it. Because that missing part is service. It is serving, right? 
Now, let me tell you another definition of serving. Responsibility. When you decide to take responsibility for people around you, for their lives, for the sick, and you take them on as this is my responsibility to get them healed. Why? Because I have faith in God. And I can tell you, listen, I do not have faith in divine healing. I have faith in God. And God is a healer. Amen? Amen? I have faith in God's nature. I have faith in his character. I don't have faith in divine healing. If I had faith in divine healing, then anybody that practiced divine healing, if there was ever a failure, your faith is gone. So I don't have faith in healing. I have faith in God, and God is a healer. How do I know that? Because that's his name, Jehovah Rapha. He said, this is who I am. And every time he gave us a name, Jehovah Shalom, the God who is our peace, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who, who is our provider, all of those names, he was telling us, this is who I want to be to you. Will you let me be this God to you? 